So I've had a lot of requests for tutorials on how I do my comics to put online. And I'm going to start by doing an ink tutorial because my friend Crystal, she does the incredible comic Earth Song. Um, she really hates inking. And that fills me with such a sadness, such an incredible sadness that I, I decided she needed to see the wonders of Flash because that is how I ink, which a lot of people don't realize that Flash is honestly easier than Illustrator. This is obviously a personal opinion, but for me it is. And for those of you who are inking in Photoshop, which is a raster-based program, you might be having some of the same trouble of, of getting, you know, especially showing movement and being able to express your lines in, in a very fluid manner. Photoshop doesn't really do a good job of allowing that kind of expression. At least I never thought it has. So um, I'm always inked in Flash. Obviously you can see I have CS3 and I have no idea what we're up to now, but it should still be applicable to what we're gonna do. So um, I always start with just opening Flash, going to Flash File Action Skip 3.0. This stuff really doesn't matter. Just pick an open thing and open it up. Uh, I turn my properties off, but if you ever have to import something that's really tall, uh, this is the default screen, but you can just go into properties down here, click on that, and edit it to kind of fit more of your ratio. Uh, keep in mind, this is a vector-based program, so if your image is 1,200 pixels wide, you don't really have to worry about that because vector is you know, kind of open. It, it, it's going to be whatever size you want it to be in the end. So anyway, I close all that because I like having as much screen as I possibly can. Uh, I import. Just go to File, Import, Import to Stage. And it's going to take you to your folder. Uh, I do all my pencils by hand now in, uh, in Photoshop, so I don't have to scan anything in. It's really nice. I'm going to do a page or uh, panel from 103. And let's see, not that one, this one. And so it's just gonna import it. It might do this. If it does this, just tell it to shut up. You don't have a sequence of images. You're not making animation. All right, so there it is in the, in the stage. Move it wherever you want. Kind of get it centered just so it's easier to deal with stuff. Uh, a lot of times it'll import really small. So you can just go up here, click on the resize, hold down shift and stretch or make small. I like to have them kind of as big as I can because there are some limitations in Flash where you can't uh, get your brush sizes much smaller. So as big as you can get, the more detail you can put in. So go up automatically, just like in Photoshop, you're gonna go up here and make a new layer. Whammo. Select your paintbrush tool. If you're on a tablet, which you should be, come over here, down here is your use pressure should already just confine to everything that you have set up already in your other uh, pressure settings. So real easy, zoom in just like Photoshop, Command, Plus. And you can get in pretty far. The, the, the closer you get in on the picture, the more detail your brush is going to have. So if I start here and try to do her eyes, my brush is going to be thicker. But if I zoom in, like that and get in real nice and close, I can get the detail of the lines a lot, lot cooler. So it's very, very easy. As you can see already, it tapers. Unlike in Photoshop, when you try to do a real beautiful swinging thing, you know, Photoshop just kind of sits there and stares at you like, what, what are you trying to do to me? This, you can get a lot of sweeping motion and you know, just in a way that you wouldn't be able to get in Photoshop. Flash kind of just takes care of that for you, and I'm sure Illustrator does something similar. So, again, just kind of going over the lines. Very simple. When you close off an area, you can go in and fill it, but you cannot close an area off, or you cannot fill an area until you close it off. So if I would have done like this, ooh. 
and tried to close that off. It's not going to let me. And what's really cool about this, if you're doing a heavy ink style or using a lot of black in your comics, this will help you find all the holes and places that you miss, which I always have a ton of because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing half the time. So I usually leave that stuff open because hair is unpredictable. And I'll go back in and I'll erase it later. But you can see already how it's just so much easier to do lines that are not, you know, you can get more definition, more variance in your line widths with very, very little effort. And if you have something like that, that's not very clean and not very sharp, just go in and erase it. Same up here, go in and erase it. Very easy, very, very easy. So, um, the place that I find the most helpful with this as a program is actually doing hair. Because in Photoshop, like I said, to start out with, see, I didn't like that. You still have all your control Z. In fact, you have more control Z power in Flash than you do in good old PS. Unless you've gone in and edited that, which you're eating a ton of memory. By all means, if your machine can handle it. Uh, one thing that you want to be careful of in Flash is if you try to make a corner, it's going to automatically try to smooth that out. So say if I did this, sometimes it's going to do just kind of weird. It's going to look strange. So I try to make my corners by connecting. So that way you also can do the line variance and put your pressures where you really want to put them instead of having single stroke commitment. So... That's the start of it. When I do hair, I try to zoom out so I can get longer breadths of, uh, of inking. I start at the bottom, personally, most of the time. That way I can get that to be lighter and this to be heavier because I want my beautiful wispy ends. The, the thing that is a limitation, it, it is a little bit harder to connect lines. So in Photoshop, you can sit in there and just, you know, eh, eh. And you'll notice they don't match in that case. But this, I, you know, I feel like this just takes practice and just finding where you want it to be and exactly what you want it to do. But it's still very fast. I can sit here and do this for 20 minutes and really, you know, make a lot more progress than I would have made in Photoshop. So, this is where I notice it the most. And I'm lenient with my line art, so if that's where I thought the hair was going to be, eh, it's probably not going to end up there. Now this I haven't overlapped, so I'm just going to come in and clean it up real quick. Because it's a little bit easier to clean in flash before you get too far. Because otherwise you start losing some integrity of where your lines were. And that's the same thing in Photoshop. That's really not much different. So yeah, see, let me try this one. Now see that one, whatever reason, I guess physically it was easier for me to do that. So I'm just gonna come in and reconnect. Real light touch down here. And that way at that joining, they're not gonna look discombobulated. So yeah. Same thing here. Uh, the other thing that's cool about Flash, just like Photoshop, I know a lot of people like to do uh, colored line art. You just come over here, pick it. Juno's hair is purple. We're going to make her a punk. She's going to have like super purple hair. Just for a second. Oh, I lied. I'm good at that. All right. There we go. So it's this one. It's the paint bucket tool. And you can in enter in hex. So some of you uh, do all your stuff by hexadecimal because you're super nerds. That's the way to do it. And then it's the same tool. Looks exactly the same. And, you know, if I decided, oh, I don't like, I, don't, I want everything to be purple. And I just come in here and whammo, everything is purple. Yay. 
So I don't have to go in and worry about all the nasty edges that were, if you were to do this in Photoshop, uh, at least with the pencil or paintbrush tool, this would not be that clean. So, and if, say, I just wanted to have her hair be purple, well, I just go back in here, kind of erase my connections to where she meets up with her eyes. I can go clean those up in a minute. And there you go, all done, completely clean. You're gonna have beautiful clean lines when you get done. So when you go into color, it moves so much faster because they're vector based. So everything's just a lot easier. Anyway, switching back to black. So let's just say that I, this was all the work I was going to do here, which is completely not true. Um, oh God, there we go. So let's say I was finished. I'm gonna go up here, go to file, no, well, before you do that, turn this, actually turn this off, make sure that you didn't forget anything. I forgot a lot of stuff. Delete it, because if you export with that layer still in there, it's gonna show up. So don't forget to do that. Then just go to export, export image, uh, blah, 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 untitled, whatever, save. I do mine at uh, 500 resolution and I color there just because I like to be able to have the option of having it gigantic in case I decide that that tiny inch panel is gonna be a splash page. So I like to keep my options open. So just do that, quality 100%. I keep it at the minim minimum image area just to keep from having any errors uh, when you start getting outside here. Hit okay, go in, and then you just go find it. What page were we on? Anyway, yeah, so then you just put it into uh, Photoshop or Open Canvas or whatever you want to use. And you have beautiful, clean, vectorized lines that didn't make you want to kill people because they weren't raster paintbrushes from hell. So I hope that helps. And I hope this video is helpful. I'll probably go back and redo it at some point and uh, make a little bit more sense <laughs> and probably not just try to say um as much as the first time I've done this. Uh, without an audience, so it's kind of interesting. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions on things you'd like to see uh, done or any tutorials that I can post for you, uh, send me an email, starcrossdestiny, without an E, just like the title, at gmail.com, and uh, I will try to do a thing for you as I am working on finishing up volume two. All right, I hope this was helpful.